Hey everybody, it's Mama Two Wife of One. I'm sure you'd much rather hear me talk about the whole TikTok phenomenon that is who the F did I marry as opposed to me talking about Married at First Sight. But you know, here we are. If you'd like to hear me talk about who the F did I marry, because I did watch all 50 plus videos, let me know. I can do a, a reaction video to that, but I feel like it's no point. Everybody's reacted to it. You don't really want to hear what I have to say. You probably won't hear what I have to say about Married at First Sight either, because honestly, who cares, right? I surely don't care about any of these people. But we're here to talk about Married at First Sight, season 17, episode 17. I will say this before I get into the episode. Oh, got my phone. I heard, I got wind of some of the upcoming dates for Married at First Sight. Specifically about Decision Day. And apparently they are splitting Decision Day between the original four couples, say that term loosely, and the last remaining couple, Michael and Chloe. So... From what I heard, tonight, February 21st, is called In Sickness and Suspicion. February 28th is Sex Wise and Questionable questionable Behavior. March 6th is Decision Day Round 1. So that's going to be for Cam and Claire, Lauren and Orion, even though they're already divorced, Becca and Austin and Emily and Brennan. Then climbing down from Decision Day is probably going to be like a where are they now, or not where are they now, but looking at them like days after they made the decision where they decide to say yes or no where everybody is head wise headspace wise probably all get together because that's just what they do march 20th will be called doubts dilemmas and drag because it's drag i'm assuming that's gonna focus on michael and chloe and then march 27th is called second times the charm question mark that's gonna be the decision day for michael and chloe and then you always know after decision day period they always have a where are they now and so there's gonna be stuff after that the my last episode that I'll be reviewing will be March 27th, Second Times to Charm. So it's February 21st as I record this. March 27th, guys, that'll be my last, that'll be the last video that I actually uh, do a reaction to. So just wanted to put that out there so you guys knew about the dates that are coming up. Okay, so this episode, all the couples are at the, let's say the ranch. They're at the cabin or the nice house, the Airbnb, but the couple's retreat. Michael and Chloe are there after being married for a whopping five days because why not go on a couple's retreat after five days? Why not? And it's funny because when they first got there, they were greeted by Austin, Claire, and Orion, I think, or maybe Lauren. Either way, they weren't with any couples when they got there. It was all just individual people because Becca had food poisoning or was sick in some kind of way, so she wasn't really in the frame too much. Emily, as we saw last week, she had the bad accident and needed stitches in her head. So we see Emily and we see Brennan in the hospital and they're talking about how she has a slight, I think she has a slight concussion, no broken bones. She talked about how the branch, she hit a tree and the branch went under her helmet and that's what caused all the blood and caused like the gash on her head. So, here's one of my questions, right? Uh, when Emily and Brennan get there, they come straight from the hospital to where everybody is gathered in the kitchen, you know, because I guess the, even before they get there, I believe he asked her, what do you want to do? And she was like, oh, I want to go back to the cabin. Like, you know, I'm not going to ruin our weekend. Let me tell you something. You have an excuse, ma'am. You have a very, very valid excuse to not be there anymore. Say you want to go back home with him. Say you want to go to your mama's house. There's some people saying in the comments, like, how come she didn't ask to go to her mama's house? I was like, you know what? I agree. I would have gone to my mama's house so she can, like, take care of me or gone somewhere. But I don't need to stay here, especially because when they went to the house, again, if you decide to go back to the house, that's your business, your prerogative. If I'm going back to the house, let me take a hot shower first and get myself together before I see everybody, before they see what I look like. Because, you know, they had to shave some of her head to put the stitches in her head, right? Blood all in her hair, and she has a black eye. Do you think this chick took a shower? No. So now she's sitting at the table with dried blood all in her hair. And I'm like, I really hope that that was her decision and it wasn't the producer's decision to have her looking at them looking the way she was. Because I'd be like, I'm tired. That was an ordeal. I am tired. I want to go take a hot shower, maybe take a nap. When I get up, I'll talk to everybody and tell them everything that happened, but I need space. Really hoping she made the decision herself to show up with a bunch of blood in her hair because it looked crazy. And I was like, this is just ridiculous. They, they went to like a ninja style uh, 
some ninja style thing where like Ninja American Warrior, whatever that show is, and did a bunch of like obstacles. Michael killed it on the obstacle course and, you know, Chloe was all impressed and turned on like, oh, he's a manly man. Forget about him wearing my earrings. Like, oh my gosh, he's just so strong. Look at him. He's whipping everybody's butt. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was great. Whatever. They did yoga together. Most of this time, the couple were all together. It wasn't a lot of individual stuff, but they did yoga together. And there was one sweet moment that I witnessed uh, between Brennan and Emily. And I'm gonna give him, I'll give him his props. He's been there for her, but just supposed to be there for your wife when she's bleeding from her head. Like, why not? So I'm not giving too many props. You basically did what any husband would do. But there was a sweet moment where he's doing yoga. She's sitting on a chair with Becca. She's not down on the floor doing you know, all the poses or whatever, but she's sitting in a chair. She's doing one of those, she's trying to do as many poses as she can from the chair. And she's like, puts her head down to imitate something they're doing. And Brendan saw her, he's like, no, no, no. Like, he's like, lift your head up. Don't, don't put your head all the way down. And it was just a really sweet moment. It was very instinctual. And I liked, okay, he's looking out for her. He's paying attention to her needs. This is great. And then during yoga, you know, they're talking about how they feel and communicating their feelings. And so Lauren and Orion, I'm I'm jumping all over the place because I don't even feel like breaking down each couple because, again, there aren't many actual couples that were there. Lauren and Orion have a discussion and Lauren kind of let him have it. She was like, you know, he kept saying, I want to just kind of steal some time away with you have a discussion and you know just try to make sure i build that bridge and i miss our connection bs and lauren basically calls him on like no you only say these things in front of everybody else when people are not around and the cameras are not on you don't call me you don't text me all the stuff you're saying i want to be friends you're not showing me any of that sir you're not and but after yoga she was a little more zen and had a conversation with him and she's like you know i don't really know how to navigate divorce i don't know what that looks like but you know, I, I, I can say right now, I'm not in a position where I want to try to build a friendship that could change. But right now, I'm just a little too, you know, I'm still in it. I'm still processing everything. He's like, okay, that's fine. I understand. Why is this a thing? Why do you need to be friends? For what? We're getting a divorce. Let us get a divorce. You made this decision weeks ago. Because at this point, they're like 12 days away from decision day. You made this decision after you've been married for only 10 days, right? Right. You said you want a divorce. I didn't, but I'm like, okay, that's what you want. I'm going to go for it. So we made that decision. After you make that decision, there's nothing to discuss. We have no marital property between us. We have no children. It was 10 days. Technically, this should be annulled. There's nothing to do. We never even had sex. Never even consummated. There's literally nothing for us to do. We don't have to talk to each other. We don't have to keep showing up at these events together at all. I don't understand. I'm going to assume, again, is the producers who are pushing them together. But for what? The marriage is over. He keeps saying, I want to build a bridge. Why? And I don't know if it's his guilt. I don't know if it's him just trying to get more camera time. I don't know what it is. But there's literally nothing he can do for her. And for her, there's nothing that she wants from him. Like, they're just confusing. Not even confusing. They're just exhausting to watch. Because it's clear that Lauren's like, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why he wants to talk to me. But yet, you're still showing up. And I, I said it before and I will say it again. What should have happened was instead of Lauren and Claire and Orion going to this couple's retreat, Lauren and Claire should have got an Airbnb themselves and just had a girls weekend and just hung out and had a good old time. And I will also say that this retreat looks like it's longer than the honeymoon between Michael and Chloe. I don't want to say my back. Becca got better. She and Austin still aren't having sex. They're still not being close with each other. Everybody keeps saying Austin's not attracted to her. I want to believe that he is because at least he kisses her all the time. But, like, I don't see what other excuse there could be, really, for him not hitting that by now. You've been married for all these, like, you've been married now for over six weeks. You've laid next to this woman every single night for over six weeks. And you haven't tried to have sex with her. I know you move slow. I understand that. And we all understand that. But this is six weeks of an accelerated process. Not even six weeks of dating somebody. This is an accelerated process. So these six weeks, they have lived pretty much like a five months. It's really what it is. Why haven't you had sex with your wife yet? She wants sex. She wants to feel love. She wants to feel desire. She is not feeling any of those things from you. What are you doing? Right? Claire, literally nothing happened with her. Nothing to say. Don't care. Emily and Brennan, though, there's still no hope for them. Anybody can be there for you in times of trauma. 
marriage has its ups and downs. It has its good times, its bad times. It has its trauma, its drama, its joys, its pains. It has all of that stuff. So having somebody who is with you through the bad times or through the trauma and seeing how they react to trauma in that way, Brennan, with the quick thinking, immediately rushed to his wife's side, immediately asked for people to call 911, held her hand the whole time, was talking to her encouragingly, sat with her the whole time she was at the hospital, made sure she was good. That is great that you did all of those things. That is what a husband should be doing for his wife who's bleeding from the head. You're supposed to be by her side. So I'm glad that you did what you were supposed to do. However, she's not going to get in a car accident every single day. At some point, you guys are going to get home. And you guys are going to have your regular thing. That stuff that you left behind is still there. You're still just trying to be friends with her. You're still not sharing a bedroom with her. You're still not hugging her or kissing her. And now if you start doing it, it's going to seem like you feel sorry for her. And it's not because, I won't say it's not because he doesn't care. I think he does care about her. But those feelings don't automatically blossom into love just because now you have to take care of somebody who had an accident. Trauma can definitely like bring people together, but trauma is not long lasting. It eventually it goes away. Eventually she's not gonna need that help. Eventually she's not gonna need somebody to stay up with her, to give her medicine, to you know, dress her wound or whatever. Eventually she's not gonna need any of those things. And once she doesn't need those things from her husband, then what is he gonna do? So nothing has been resolved at all. Yes, yeah, she saw a different side of him and it was great. He was there when she needed him. That is so fantastic and wonderful. A friend would have done the exact same thing that Brennan did. So, I don't really see anything happening. And then with Chloe and Mike, Michael, there have been so many different things that people have said online. And people, I'm doing my video right now, baby. It's okay. Okay, thank you. And people have been saying that, you know, Chloe's an actress. She doesn't really like him. She's not attracted to him. I think that I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt because obviously I don't know. I'm going to assume she's a real woman who really wanted to be on the show, really wanted to get married, who is genuinely developing feelings for Michael. I think that she does find him very attractive. Obviously, it's a little off-putting when you see your husband wearing a skirt and when you see him wearing earrings. And she's made several comments about it. Like, you know, it's a little off-putting. He says, blah, blah, blah. And the fact that she keeps mentioning it, even before they were around the other couples and they were leaving. And she's like, oh, you're packing a skirt. Okay, oh, you're wearing a skirt. Okay, well, I see it. Well, don't forget the skirt. Like, she was making just little snide comments here or there. And I feel like Michael needs to read the room. The fact that she's constantly bringing it up is proof that she's not comfortable with this. Like, she's not being snark. Uh, she's being a little snarky. But she's not being, like, overly cruel and mean with the things that she's saying. But it's like, Michael, the fact that she keeps bringing it up, that's a sign that she's not down with this. She's not cool with it, bruh. You need to do something about this or address it or something. But she never does. But when she sees him on the obstacle course, she's like, oh, my gosh, he's so strong. And he's quick and he's doing this and doing that. I did think it was funny that they're the oldest people there. And when they got back to the house, she walked in on him having a hot bath. He's like, see, this is what the young people don't see. I'm not about to let them, you know, treat me like the old man. I like, can't do stuff. However, the result of me doing all of that, you know, stuff at the obstacle course is I got to soak my bones. But she's like, oh, he is very sexy in the tub. And the thing is, I think Michael is an attractive guy. I do. And I think she sees more of that in the next episode when he takes her to the boxing ring because he likes to box. And, you know, I'm sure that power and, you know, seeing him be focused and concentrating, I'm sure that's going to do a lot for her libido. But I, I don't know. I feel like it's too soon. It hasn't even been, it hasn't even been seven days for these people. Fortunately, after decision day for the remaining couples, we'll get to see more of Michael and Chloe and get to, Chloe, yeah, we'll get to see more of them. Hopefully get to see them, you know, having their housewarming party and meeting more with the experts and who knows, maybe they'll be the first couple to have sex, which would be wild, considering none of the other couples have had sex and they've all been married for six weeks. And who knows, maybe we'll see Cameron again. Who knows, he might pop up, you know, back on the scene. They're like, oh, hey, I'm still here. I still don't want to be married to her. Okay, bye, y'all. Have a good life. But that's pretty much it. Nothing, I mean, yeah, nothing really big happened. The episodes are just kind of dragging on. They're not exciting. They're not enticing at all. And when I tell you guys, every single week, I dream about just quitting. And like, you know what? Forget these last episodes. Nobody's watching anyway. 
but I'm moving on with my word, or I try to be. So I'm going to keep talking about the show. But I will mention a little bit about who the F did I marry just because I'm done with the episode and it's still early. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, who the F did I marry is this woman on TikTok who did this 50 part series about a relationship she had that lasted around 15 months from meeting this guy, dating this guy, moving in with him, getting pregnant, getting engaged, getting married, getting divorced. All this in 15 months happened in Atlanta. And I'm not going to rehash all the details because, again, if you want to listen to the story, it's very fascinating. But the end result is that there are a lot of red flags that she ignored. And as a result, she fell for all of the lies this guy told. And I did a video on TikTok about it, like a really short video, because it was just the main question that I had for people who lie is what is the point of lying when what you're saying can easily be disproven he lied about things like his mom died in 2020 from covid she died in 2008 because the woman found the obituary it's like why lie about that like just say my mom died in 2008 i just like lies like that don't make sense he would fabricate conversations every morning at 6 15 a.m she he would wake this woman up talking on the phone to his brother like yeah do 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 and did this every freaking morning nobody was on the other phone nobody he has a brother the brother's like i ain't talked to him in a minute but you talk to this imaginary brother every day at 6 15 a.m waking me up talking and laughing out loud having full conversations like none of that made any sense so that's my first thing when it comes to lying why another thing was that i appreciated that she held herself accountable she was basically like i was dumb i wanted it to be real so i believed it even when i caught him in lies i just kind of dismissed it so she admitted that i appreciate that as well and I also realized that i am not in a place to judge because this all happened during the pandemic this is in 2020 and this happened right before the city of atlanta shut down and she decided i don't want to be quarantined alone i like this man so even though it's only been a couple of weeks we're going to move in together and then that's when kind of everything blew up where it's like oh now you're pregnant now i have a miscarriage he proposed we got married we're supposed to buy a house how can we even get that house we're supposed to get a car how come i didn't get that car and just a bunch of stuff started piling up right and again the reason why i can't judge and i can't say much because i was not in that position i was not during quarantine i was you know this is only four years ago i was married had my husband had my babies right so didn't know that life also for her age she looks like she's probably late 30s early 40s she was clear she was like i was tired of being alone i was hoping this was my time i wanted to be married i wanted to have kids and it's like oh i'm meeting a man who is you know taking care of me he's paying the household bills he's treating me to dinner and doing this and this and this he's just treating me with, with respect he's listening to me he's caring about me and that was intoxicating that's the word that she used and i can't relate to that because again at that age me being in late 30s early 40s I've been in a relationship. My husband and I have been married for 10 years, but we've been together for 20 years. So I miss this whole wave of like online dating and, you know, trying to figure out if a person's catfishing you. I missed all of that. So I can't judge her. And I don't, who knows if I would have made similar decisions. Like I want to believe I wouldn't let somebody move in necessarily. But even just the idea of buying what somebody's saying just because I don't want to be alone. I can't judge her for that. So I will say that, the story itself was, she's an amazing storyteller, plenty of details. The story itself, I couldn't decide when I was listening if I'm listening to a woman really recount her life or easily it could have been a woman who is recounting the plot to a book that she is writing or a movie that she really likes. It definitely leads itself to some visual interpretation of this. I will say when it comes up, oh, oh, this is the other comment that I had. When it comes to a story like this, I feel like one of two things will possibly happen. Women who are in relationships now who have been ignoring red flags or have long, hopefully they're inspired by her story. And they're like, you know what? I did notice he did this. I did notice she said that. Let me step away now before things get a little too, you know, it, before I get so far away from myself that now I'm stuck and I can't get out. So on one hand, I hope that her story did that for people. It gave women or men the courage to actually get out of a situation that is not serving them. 
The other thing, which could potentially be a dangerous thing, and I'm hoping this hasn't happened, is that someone will get so sucked into the story that almost sounds unbelievable, but obviously people out there exist because, you know, pathological lying is an actual thing. So they have the, if they have a name for it, that means people have actually had this, right? So my fear is that people who are in a relationship, a, semi, a seemingly healthy relationship, are going to hear her story and now they're going to see red flags where there are none. Because they're going to hear this story and they're going to be like, oh man, she liked this guy and he did this and this and this, but wait a minute, he was hiding this. But he was pretending he was on the phone, but he did this. What if my man is doing that? And granted, maybe I should give people a little more credit to believe that they're not going to think that way. But you just never know how people are going to interpret it, interpret different things. So I'll say this. For women and men who are dating out there, trust your gut. Pay attention to red flags. Listen to your instincts and do what you need to do to protect yourself. People who are in relationships, if you don't see red flags, don't let her story put it in your head that, oh my God, something's wrong with my person. Because granted, maybe something is, maybe something isn't, but don't, you know, the old folks used to have a saying called don't borrow trouble, which means if nothing is awry, don't make something be awry just to stir some stuff up. Don't, you know, create a problem that is not there, essentially. So that's just kind of my take on that whole situation. I didn't look at the videos where the ex-husband, you know, revealed himself. I didn't look at the videos where his former stepson said something. I don't care about any of that stuff. I listened to the story. I was interested. Once the story came to a conclusion, I immediately lost interest. Like, okay, that was it. That was three or four days of my time. All right. But yeah, that's my two cents on that. And that's the review we have married for Sight, season 17, episode 17. I'll see you guys next time where I talk about episode 18. Make sure you like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel, comment below. Comment below if you watch the uh, Who the F Did I Marry series. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Comment below if you think Michael and Chloe are going to make it. Because honestly, I don't care about the other four couples at all. But yeah, I hope to hear from you guys and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.